Hi guys. It is Saturday, June 29th, 2024. And I'm here to do my June whip update. Um, still not a great month. I mean, I did some stitching. It was okay. It's better than some other months. I'm still kind of slow. My stitch counts are still kind of low. But, you know, I'm getting there. Um, so I have some stitching. I have some sash, got some plans, got some forgotten sash from when Vic was here last month. So, uh, yeah. So it's probably not going to be terribly long, but, you know, I'll show you what I got. Um, so whips. Oh, here. Um. My first whip is a relatively new start. I started this in April. This is Happy Birthday by Blackbird Designs. And I wanted to be done with this already, and I'm not. And my friend's birthday is at the end of July, and I don't think I'm going to get it done. I might get it done before her birthday, but it's not going to be framed before her birthday. So, I did, I'll show you where I am on it, I did 399 stitches on it, and it just worked out that way, like, I couldn't have done that if I tried. Um, well, yeah, I could have, if I was doing a 400 stitch prompt for a group, I would have done 399 stitches. Um, so I finished up. I finished up the last bit of the frame of the house, the walls of the house, and I did the year, and I did this flower up here, or this, I think that's supposed to be like a sun, I'm not even sure what that's supposed to be, and I did the vase of flowers down here. So, that's 399 stitches, and I altered the year a little bit, um, the zero. So, the model was stitched in 2010, and they made the zeros very small. Like, the twos are as charted, but they made the zeros very small because it's 2010, so there's two zeros, it's symmetrical. But when I did it like that for 2024, it looked weird. So, they have a full alphabet and number chart in the, in the chart, so I used the zero off of the number chart to make them look right. I asked my friends what they thought, and they were like, yeah, no. It looks weird with the small zero. I fixed it. So there's my 399 stitches. Oh, and I did the, I did the door and I did the the step of the door. Didn't do the windows. And there's still a bunch of like vines and leaves and, you know, all that kind of stuff. The box that says Happy Birthday. So. I may be able to get a store bought frame for it. I don't know. But her birthday is at the end of July. I'm going to be off for like half of July. I always take two weeks of vacation in July. And because of where the 4th of July holiday falls and how my, my regular days off fall, it's going to be like two and a half weeks. And so maybe I can hustle a little bit and finish this when I'm off work. My, my plans for when I'm off work are already way unrealistic. Like... They're like fantasy laurel plans, and actual laurel is not going to do all that. So, we'll see. But there's... Happy birthday. Alright. Next up, I just worked on this today. I've been stitching on this all day. And I, um, and I stitched on this, I stitched on this some last night and I frogged some of it last night and then I restitched what I frogged and I did the rest. Um, this is, line is the trick and the treat by Prairie Moon. So there's where I am. on it 
and I stitched on I stitched on this motif right here with the witch's hats off. And so I had done the border. Excuse me while I hot mess here. Okay, so I had done the border and I realized that I had made a mistake in the border. Each of these lines making the border is six stitches. And on one of these, I only did five stitches. So when I um, when I went to, I thought, you know, it's just one stitch off. I don't want to frog it because by the time I realized I had made a mistake, I had already finished both sections of the border. And it was like, it was like right here. I started up here and it was like right in here somewhere. Where I messed up and by the time I finished it I had done all of it and I was I wasn't gonna frog it um but then when I did this witch's hat of course it didn't quite fit because it was this was one stitch too far this way but what really changed my mind last night when I stitched this witch's hat because I thought, oh, you won't be able to tell. But when I stitched this witch's hat, it was really obvious that it did not line up. So I ended up frogging all of this border. And I put all the border back in today. And I did this part. And I did this. And I did that. So the, the inside of the motifs, or the inside of the block, and the restitched part of the border was 503 stitches. So there's um sign is a trick. This section, this is this is the piece that I divided into 12 to try to finish it this year. This is February section. This part under here is the scarecrows, and this is March's section. And the one right next to it here is the uh, witch's shoes, which is May. So this is another one of these. Fantasy Laurel plans for vacation is to finish both March and May. We'll see if that happens. Um, but there's a uh, sign of the trick on the tree. The fabric is 32 count flapper by a pitch of plus. So, and if I finish, actually, if I finish the scarecrow block right here, that'll be a second page finish. I have finished page, oh, it's upside down. Oh, I have finished this part here. This is page three. And when I finish the, the scarecrow block down here, this is page six. So that'll be a second page finish on this. So, there's that. This was a problem project. If you guys remember, this was a problem project. So, because I couldn't see the fabric. And so I'm very excited to have gotten this far on it where I'm I'm ready to finish the second page on it. Because I there was a point where I wasn't sure I was going to be able to finish it. So, I'm very excited. And my last project that I stitched on. Oh, oh this is fine. Um this is another this is this is a project that's still kind of a problem child and I'm I'm trying to work through it. So this is the Little Bus Fairy by Started by Haid, artwork by Selena Fennick, which is now retired. I think they retired it in April because drama at Haid. Um, and uh, so there she is. And this is a problem project. This is my work project on the days that I'm in the office. 
So this month, um, I managed to do 287 stitches, and it was all of this in here. I worked, I worked in here, and I I worked in the office for nine days, and um, I did 287 stitches. I'm 73.66% done with her. So, there she is. And I'm not sure what's going to happen to her in July because I'm not going to be in the office. I'm, I think I'm finally going to be in the office about five days. I don't know if I'm going to work on her when I'm on vacation. So, she may not get very much attention in July. But, um... I'm not very far, actually this week, I'm in the office three days this week, I'm in the office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and she'll probably hit her 500 stitches, I'm at 440 something stitches I think, so she'll probably hit her, um, her 500 stitches for the year this week, so that'll be good, so there she is, and I also, I think I, I showed it last did I show it last month? Um, I did a little tiny bit of stitching on Abalonia. I did like 50 stitches on Abalonia. I think I talked about it in my last video that um, I needed a little bit more stitching in Abalonia to finish my May categories. And I did that. Um, and actually some of the some of the stitches I did, the previous border that I did the one that I frogged, that was, that was also some of the stitches that I needed to finish my May categories. And then I frogged it, and those stitches counted for my June categories. I still need about 300 stitches for June categories. We're going to get to categories. But I still need about 300 stitches between Poppy and Abalonia. And I think I'm going to give Abalonia 100, and I'm going to give Poppy 200. And we're going to try to finish that up tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday. In the next couple of days. And then over vacation, I can focus on July's categories. Let's talk about July's categories, shall we? July's categories. I actually don't love this set of categories. I don't. The first one is fandom. And you guys know what this is, you know, Star Wars and Doctor Who and whatever, whatever kind of fandom, Disney, whatever kind of fandom you like to uh, stitch. I don't do very much fandom stitching. I don't do hardly any, in fact. Um, and I think the only fandom stitching I've done is a little bit of Disney because I do love Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I have done some Disney stitching, but I'm not, a lot of the a lot of the fandom stitching are sci-fi kinds of things, Star Wars and Doctor Who and Lord of the Rings and actually I don't even know that they have a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff, but there's just, I'm not very, I'm not into fandom stitching. Um, so I don't have anything that fits in that category. So I'm going to use my alternate, which is my dogs, which has not gotten any love this year. Um, older than 2022, this is a whip you started before 2022, more than two years old. I'm going to use Linus the Trick in the Treat for that. PDF, pattern type PDF, I'm going to use the Fairy for that. Haven't stitched on in 2024. I can use any number of things because I've stitched on a very limited number of whips. I've done very limited stitching. I've stitched on a very limited number of whips. But I think I'm going to try to use Under the Evergreen because that's something else that also has not gotten a lot of love this year. In fact, that hasn't gotten any. I haven't touched it this year. And you can't finish it if you don't work on it. So I'm going to try to give that some love this year. Longest since worked on. My longest since worked on is Mirabilia's The Kiss. I do not want to pull that out. I don't want to pull it out and put 100 stitches or 200 stitches in it. I'm, I, I don't want to do that. So I'm also going to use the dogs for that one. So, um, 
So that's that's my categories. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't love the set of categories, but it's fine. Um, yeah. So that's um, July categories. I'm, so I'm going to do the little bit to finish June. I'm going to try to finish July. Try to get some stitches in. I also want to try to finish Happy Birthday. And I'd like to do some stitches on Travel Memories. Hello. I feel some kind of way about my friend at that score right now. I'm not very happy with him. I wanted to see him this month, and I'm not. I doubt that I'm going to. Um, he's going to be gone the entire month of July, and I wanted to see him before he left. And I'll be shocked if I see him tomorrow. Um, so I feel some kind of way about that. Um, so yeah, that's. I'd like to stitch on travel memories. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm hoping because I'm going to be off that I'm going to get more stitching done than I have been. Um, I've also, you know, I've been doing some other stuff. I've been doing some stuff with my house. I did some cooking, which I haven't done in quite a while. Um, I did a little bit of baking. So at my uh, job, we have to see the public. So, you know, we're a government agency, we're open to the public. If they come in to talk about their case, we have to see them. And so what they, our office started doing in January, instead of them calling the team, like looking at the case and then calling whatever team that that case belongs to, they just have one team station out there all day. And that team takes all the interviews for that day. So we've kind of started a thing on our days to interview where we've started trying to bring food. So I thought we're having an interview day on Thursday. I'm going to make, um, I have this old recipe. Do you guys, some of you might remember like 15 years ago, sometime in the mid 2000s probably, might even be closer to 20 years ago now. Uh, Starbucks used to have this pastry, this blueberry oat bar, and it was wonderful. And Back in the day, I found a, a copycat recipe for it, and I had made it back in the day, and I'm like, I'm going to try to make that again, and I found the recipe. I have this binder of old recipes that I printed out from, like, between 2008 and 2012 or something like that, and um, I think I had made this recipe, like, in 2009, so I was going through this, this binder of recipes. That, and there's a lot of stuff in there that I used to make, stuff that I wanted to make. Uh, the Dave Ramsey community that I used to belong to had a whole recipe thread. And there's a lot of recipes that came off of that thread or off of that board. People posted them in other places on that board. And so <laughs> um, I have a bunch of those recipes. Uh, there was a lot of fun memories in there from the old uh, Dave Ramsey board. Um we used to do this uh, Thanksgiving pantry challenge every year, like in the like in the six or eight weeks running up to American Thanksgiving at the end of November. Um, the challenge was to use up your the stuff in your kitchen, use up your pantry, use up your freezer, um, and try to only spend like twenty five dollars on groceries to buy produce, to buy milk, to buy bread, things like that. But try to uh, use up the stuff in your kitchen. And it was sort of, for the girl who coordinated it, it was sort of a spiritual exercise for her that it was like, uh, it was, you know, like cleaning out your pantry and recognizing how much you had and then starting fresh for the Thanksgiving and going into the holidays and then going into the new year. And, uh, so it was a challenge that we did several years. So we would um, make inventory lists of our kitchen and we would post them on there. And the same girl who ran this challenge, she's wonderful. She's a whiz at taking your inventory. And one of the girls I posted about this in a 
different place and one of the girls said she made me a list that I used for six months like a menu off of her kitchen inventory that she used for six months and um so I found one of those lists in there and of my inventory and it, it was a lot of fun um so I made the blueberry oat bars I made this spinach sort of a spinach salad recipe I made a um chicken recipe that I don't think I'll make again. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I wasn't that in love with it. I have similar recipes that I like better, so I probably won't make it again. But. So I did some of that. Um, my birthday's coming up. I think I'm going to maybe make myself a birthday cake. Uh, Dawn at the Minimal Mom, Minimal Mom has, I think I might have talked about this last month, <laughs> Dawn at the Minimum Mom on YouTube has a $5 PDF book of her bunt cake recipes, and I have a bunt pan, so I think maybe I'll, I'll buy her, her PDF and maybe make one of her recipes, I don't know, but maybe I'll, I'll make myself a cake for my birthday, um, so, yeah, um, but I'm gonna try to do some stitching. And try to catch up on some of these goals like they called Whipco my Whipco picks for this month I'm so behind on Whipco I don't think I finished one of my goals yet um my Whipco picks for this month are Abalonia and um Something else. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Savannah. Abalonia and Savannah. Savannah has also gotten very little attention. I think she's gotten all of like 200 stitches this year. Um, probably she's not going to get any stitches in July because we've already talked about Fantasy Laurel's, you know, <laughs> unrealistic plans. So uh, Abalonia or Savannah is going to have to wait. So. Anyway, that's plans and a little bit of other stuff that I've been doing. I did some cooking. Um, and, yeah. Uh, last month I was talking about how when Vic was here last month, we went to Ikea. And I got rid of the piece of furniture. So I bought, I bought a piece of furniture at Ikea when I was with Vic to replace something else that I had. And so... That piece of furniture I finally got rid of. A friend from church came over and helped me get it out. Which I appreciate him. And um, so I, when I'm on vacation, I also want to put that Ikea piece together. And, and uh, fill it up and, you know, do what I need to do with it. So, anyway... That's that. So, um, haul. I have a little bit of haul. I, I don't have a lot. I have something that I ordered. Um, Valerie at Live and Die LA um, did that tag everyone thing on her page, and I hate that. But I went over there and, you know, I was, like, giving her money. And so I'm waiting for that order. I ordered a couple of pieces of fabric, and I think I ordered some thread. And uh, so she hasn't sent those out yet. I don't have that. Hopefully soon. Um, but what I did get is, well, I'll show this first. I got, so on my last video, I think I talked about in fact, I'm pretty sure I talked about the Homespun Needlework Group was getting ready to release 
another exclusive. This one is by Christina at Will Cyrus Snaps. No, it's not. The last one was by Christina at Will Cyrus Snaps. This is by Tanya at the Scarlet House. And so it came out on June 14th, and their Laurel was throwing money at Tanya. And so this is uh, Sarah Sanderson. Was it? Sarah Sanderson, 1872. So I got that. And I put it in this. You know, some projects just don't have a bag that kind of screams at the smashes. So I put it in this bag that I got from Garan. And there, the bird's not standing on its head. Um, so I put it in this bag. And it comes with the fabric. The fabric is Valley Forge by Needle and Flax. And I think this is a color that they've developed specifically for this project. And they sense also the threads are classic color work. And they sent this little needle box. And so well, it has a little magnet in it to hold your needles. And then it has a little pins to hold the lid on. I got this is the stuff that I forget that I forgot to show from Vic last month because I couldn't remember what she bought, what she got gave me. But then I remembered, I'm like, oh yeah. So I got um traveling stitcher by Little House Needleworks, which um Sheila at uh, Sunshine Stitcher Stitch List. I think she finished hers. She changed some of the colors. I think she finished it. And then I got this Just Nan Halloween one, Whimsy. And this one is a kit, and it comes with a little frame. And so I got that one. And then the other thing she gave me, and I felt I felt really bad that I forgot to show this in the video last week, uh, last month. Um, she she ordered some mugs from. Uh, oh, what's that website called where you can order stuff? I've ordered from them. Shutterfly. See, it says it on the bottom of the mug. Um, so she she gave me a mug, and she put my put my name on it. But she put my Maidens of the Seasons on it. And then she put my Quaker game board on it. And my name. Um, and this isn't her fault. She only had, you know, she only had what she had to work with. But I wish that picture of Quaker game board was a little bit better. Um, so she gave me that. And I used it for my coffee. Um, see, since Vic's been here, I've got a new habit because... We bought a coffee maker when Vic was here, and so now when I'm home, either teleworking or on the weekends, now I make myself a cup of coffee every morning. Um, so I used it for a little bit, but I switched to a bigger mug. So, uh, so she got me this, and she bought she there were there, she bought a few of them, uh, but that's what she got me. So. And then the last thing that I got, and if you don't want any spoilers, I'm guessing that everybody's got theirs by now, but if you live overseas or for whatever reason you don't have yours yet, um, you might want to turn this off. But I got the uh, mystery box, the dragon mystery box from Bestitch Me. So I'm going to show that. So if you don't want to see it, feel free to turn it off. Um So, 
I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Um, so this this box is amazing. Like, I remember, and I've talked about this too. Uh, a few years ago, Trisha at Three Out Threads had gotten a box from Black Neil Society for Christmas, like an advent box, and I was like, "Wow, that's amazing!" Because the one that I got, which was like twenty five percent of the price, was not that amazing. <laughs> And, um, I was like, that's what I want. But then I saw how much she paid for it. And I was like, oh, well, that explains it. This was more in the price point, or maybe even a little higher in price point than the Black Needle Society one. Um, of course, prices have gone up since then, inflation. So maybe they're about equivalent. But, um, uh, this is, yeah. This, besides Vic's two boxes, a Christmas box and the Halloween box that Vic did, this is probably the best mystery box that I've gotten. Um, and it's really true that you get what you pay for. If you pay for a, if you pay for a sixty dollar box, you get a sixty dollar box. If you pay for a three hundred dollar box, you get a three hundred dollar box. It's really true. You get what you pay for. So this is amazing. So there's some citrus lotion. And there's some tools in here. And they're all magnetized and stuck together, but there's some counting pins that have these little red. Oh, so the theme is dragons. So there's the counting pins have this little dragon charm on it. Let's take it out. So it's got this little dragon charm. And the red, uh, the little red gems. And they're very strong. Uh, very strong needle minder. And there's a um, frogger that has a little gem on the bottom. And this amazing needle case that has a castle, and it's so cool. And it slides open, and it has a little magnet at the bottom for your needles. I don't want to take up your time on camera to put all this away. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to lose half of it. Alright. So then, let me just put this over here. So then we got a little dragon scissor fob with a little dragon charm on the bottom.
And we got the little brush to brush away your frogging. Looks like a mascara brush. I thought this was one of the coolest things because I've been wanting one of these. Um, I've been wanting to get one of the ones from R and R Woodworks, KY, Kentucky, and but there's a, a thread winder. I think this is a nine inch one, so if you wind it, it's an 18 inch length. And so you stick your thread in this little slot right here, and then you wind it around, and you cut it. You can't see it there, but there's a line here, so you. You cut it where it meets up right here, and it'll give you an 18-inch length thread. And it's got the little wagon cutouts in it. That was one of my <laughs> that was one of my favorite things that came in the box. And I'm telling you, by the time I finish this video, I'm gonna have lost half the stuff in the box. Okay. Got a little ball tip needle, which I have never used. I know that um, Pat Carson used to make these, and they got discontinued when she passed away. Um, all right. What else do we have in here? We have a needle minder. Which is beautiful. And we have a thread keep with some mm -hmm. little dragon thread keep and some, I don't know if these are called thread chips or what they're called. You know, they hold your thread. You can string them together on the thread keep. I feel like I need a dragon project that's not a Teresa Winsler. Because, hello. And also because it's the year of the dragon. And they were actually having a sale for this. Um, and I have not participated because I have not found a dragon that I actually want to stitch, except that it's the other dragon. So, and then, so here is the pattern. The pattern that was designed for the box is by Brittany at Ingleside Imaginarium. And this is called Spots and Stripes. And um, it's not really my thing. So I'm probably not going to stitch it. But that's what the, the box, the pattern is that came with the box. And then the fabric that she put it on is, here's the fabric that came. This is the pattern, the fabric that goes with the pattern. This is the Dragon's Breath. Of course, by Be Stitch Me. And I got a 28 count Lugana. So this is Dragon's Breath. And there's a few silks in here that go with it. There's Dragon's Breath. And what's the other one that goes with it? Is it this one? No. Oh. It's the other one that goes with it. It's this one. 
cauldron. So those are the, the two, um, actually they're cottons, they're not silks, but those are the two threads that go with Whitney's pattern and go on the tavern. And then there's just some more uh, threads in here by Bestitch Me. This is Dragon Scale. It's a lot more green than it's showing in the picture. <laughs> um, it's like a kind of a dark teal. And this is Jewels. It's a purple and pink. It's very pretty. This is Red Barn. It's not as orange as it looks on the camera. This is Lipstick. This is like a magenta pink. This is Solar, which is... It's, it's, it's more orange than it's showing in the camera. It's like a yellow orange. It looks kind of a, <laughs> at least on my computer, it looks kind of like a lemon yellow, but it's more of a yellow orange. This is strong, which is a purple. This is Penguin, which is like a dark red purple. It looks kind of brown on the camera, but it's like dark red purple. Like a dark red. And this is Fairy Wrens, which is a gorgeous blue. It's darker than that. And then there's two more pieces of fabric. There is, this is Dragon Scale, which is beautiful. It's like a blue, like a blue green with some modeling. And this is Dragon's Lair, which is like a brown, gold, gray kind of modeling. Also very pretty. And then of course the last, I think the last thing in the box. Can't have all this dragon stuff without a dragon project bag. So there's dragon project bag. It's beautiful. There's the fire. And there's the dragons. Beautiful. I feel like I need a dragon project, but I don't have one. I kind of went looking for one, but I couldn't find one that, that I was like, oh, I want to stitch that apart from, oh, we're having a dragon cell or I have a dragon bag. Like, I want one that I actually want to stitch and not like, let me stitch it for the sake of having a dragon project. So, um, I found a couple, actually, I found a couple of really small, cute ones on mybobbin.com, um, and they're small, so, you know, that's good, but I don't know. I haven't found one that I'm like, oh, let me stitch that one, so, I don't know. That's my, that's my dragon box. Um, it was, it's wonderful. I'm not a huge fan of the pattern, but the rest of it is fantastic. Um... And I think that's about all that I have. Um, so hopefully there's going to be a lot of stitching in July. <laughs> um, the next couple of days I want to finish my June categories, get started on July, finish up my last few days of work. Um, yeah. Uh, another thing that I might do over my vacation is I might uh, go see a friend in San Diego one day. Um, we were supposed to do this last year. She comes 
she lives in Arizona. And she comes to San Diego every summer for a couple of weeks to see her brother. And she and I and a couple of other friends were supposed to get together. And it ended up not working out. And we didn't do it. Um, but hopefully this year maybe I'll be able to meet up with her. Um, I don't know if the other two girls are going to be invited or if they're going to come or not. But uh, hopefully this year I'll be able to meet up with her. I haven't seen her in a few years. So, um, in fact... I saw her in 2016, and I'm not even sure if I've seen her since then. I think I've maybe seen her once or twice since then, but, um, so, hopefully I'll be able to see her. Um, so, and, um, Alma. Alma also has a birthday a few days before mine, so, hopefully I'll get to see Alma. <laughs> um, we usually try to get together around our birthdays and go out to lunch or, you know, do something and hang out together for a few hours. Um, also, my birthday's coming up. I want to do a new start for my birthday, and I'm thinking I want to do, because I keep buying these exclusives from Homespun, I'm thinking I want to start one of those, and I'm thinking maybe, uh, Emily's Bliss from Summer House Stitch Works, um, I was also thinking maybe about Hannah Wilson, so I don't know. Uh, yesterday in the chat, Megan was talking about stitching on Matters Choice by Carriage House Sampling. I think it's by Carriage House. And I was like, oh, I want to stitch that. And so I'm like, maybe I'll start that. <laughs> and then today I saw somebody stitch, or she was selling the completed project of one of the Lizzie Kate Green Flippets. And I have that whole series. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll stitch that. I don't know. I'm going to start something for my birthday. Who knows? Stay tuned. Um, I don't know. I really would like to start one of, the, one of the exclusives, though, because I keep buying them. And I've only stitched two of them. I stitched Hope Song and I stitched Tomato Tomato. Um, I have a bunch of them. Oh, I have this one too. This is Rose Hill Farm by Stacey Nash. I could start that one. I don't know. But I'm going to figure out something. And, um, so I think that's it for me. When I see you next month, I'll be a year older. Um, <laughs> and I'll be back at work already and probably complaining about it. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Happy 4th of July if you're in the United States, and happy stitching to everybody else, and I will see you next month. Bye!